You know, the other films out there that probably seem like uh, films that are just mainstream cash grabs, but they really are deep. The sibling rivalry message that goes in the boss baby, I really thought was deep. And this movie is something that Martin's like, you better cut that shit off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mar Martin wanna look at me like that right now. I was like, All right, Martin, I'm sorry. I'll change it. Let's go ahead and get into a little something else about movies here. I'm a little disappointed with people. You know, people out there they call themselves critics, they call themselves journalists, and yet I think y'all a little short sighted out there. Uh, I'll get into the article that I saw in a little bit, but uh, I, whatever said about 2017, I completely understand. I get it. Uh, it has not been an easy summer at all. We have literally seen Pirates of the Caribbean literally jump the shark <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> at this point. We, but we expected that. But we expected that. One of the things I did not give this movie credit for the unexpected. We got Transformers who freed the slaves with Lincoln and hung out with Frederick Douglass. So, you know, it's a... It has been a hard summer, and we're at the we're at the last part of it where it was very hard. I mean, we got we're at this part of the summer where we got punched to the face a few times. Uh, it didn't help that we just recently saw the Dark Tower, and that, oh, people somebody felt that one hard. They just, ooh, shit, cut that shit off. It hurts, <laughs> and it doesn't help. <laughs> and it doesn't help that. A week earlier, we had to deal with those goddamn emojis. It's been, we have gotten a two hit punch to the face these last couple of weeks. And I understand because it brought the box office down. By this time last year, 2016, the box office, the box office was up 10%. Mm -hmm. And now it's dropped. And it doesn't help that we've had to watch all these shitty movies. People are like, man, I am hurting too much right now. And here's the thing <clears throat> that happened now that we have this thing that has occurred people are saying oh they're using these words like uh hollywood is fizzling now oh they can't come back from this and my favorite words that i keep hearing and some people say hey look they have a point franchise fatigue sure. these franchises have got that finally, if Hollywood can't learn, the audience is going to teach you with their pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to pay all these high price tickets to go see some franchise bullshit because y'all just want to make a quick buck. And that is the thing that I've read today. And somebody even sent this to me. Excuse me. It's in the Daily Wire. And it's, all, it's going on about how franchises are bringing everything down. Nobody wants to go see these movies. Everything I just said. And... The article that I have here, the title of it is, let's see here. Uh, let me read. Oh, there it is. Hollywood is in no shape to bounce back from box office bust. And near the end of it, again, understanding their frustration, they're saying that they're baffled. Because they say that they're baffled that no one will come out and just speak the simple truth. Movies are just not good anymore. And this should have been apparent as soon as the once lucrative home video market began its collapse. And they say that the more out of touch Hollywood becomes, the worse its product becomes. And there is little chance to change any of that. And with what they're saying, I get it. But I think you're looking at the last few weeks of a very bad summer, the second half of it. Yeah. And y'all are not looking at the, at the big picture. Why you have a point that, I mean, it is true. There are things like the movies out there that are getting uh, they're, they're getting uh, uh, great reviews to okay reviews, and they're not doing as expected. Cars three, I mean, not everybody loved this movie, but it didn't get really uh, terrible reviews. And but people are saying that's fine. You, I can take that or leave that shit. I don't care. Uh, but the one that everybody's talking about, you might be surprised to hear this: Spider Man Homecoming. Mm -hmm. yeah. People are saying with this movie having made. Having made, I believe, worldwide six hundred and seventy-one million dollars, they're like, "Well, shit, ain't a billion yet." So, <laughs> you fuck it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it underperformed. Yeah, Peter Parker, you fucking up. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what people are saying? They say that yeah. it is. It is not so much a disappointment in that eh, we just expected you to do better, boy. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. that. That's all. But let's not have this say that this is a bad year. 
Because some people are reading that and they're saying, yeah, man, this really has been a suck-ass year for, for movies. And while I understand what you're saying, too, because, believe me, I'm hurting. I'm hurting real bad from some of the, the injuries I had to take this summer. Uh, that Baywatch. That Baywatch hurt me bad. I'm still recovering from that Baywatch. <laughs> you know, I, I I don't understand why that hurt you so bad. I don't because either. it's a really fucking shitty movie, man. You have your Martin, Martin, Martin. You have your movies that you really hate, and people like we don't get it. Like Boss Baby, people like and Spider-Man Two. Yeah, and Spy- Yeah, yeah, and Spider-Man Two. You know, you <laughs> got your movies that. Yeah, <laughs> but you have but your we, movies. We, we, we can't live in this year. No, 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 no we no, cannot. We, no, we to, yeah, we're gonna dig deep, Martin. We're digging deep, brother. Because you have your movie. Your Spider-Man Two is shit. You have a history of movies. Movies that you don't like and people like, okay, we don't get why you hate him, Martin, but all right, move the fuck on, you're crazy. <laughs> but, you know, okay, but, so you hate Baywatch, move the fuck on, you're crazy. No, because we are in this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing up new shit. Baywatch is a really, I'm sorry, Martin, Baywatch, and the thing is, it's one of those, I, I, would, I would say, all right, I would be quiet, but the majority of people out there have said, this is critics and audience alike, they said this is one of the worst movies this year. It's really one of those movies where they didn't even understand why this film exists, except that they had the name Baywatch, and that's it. The other one that I think everybody can agree on and say, like, like right here, some people be like, well, I don't get why you're so upset about it, but, you know, I'm hurting by these attempted universes, too. The Mummy, that Mummy beat the fuck out of me, man. That, that Mummy whooped my ass. I'm still hurting. You survived worse. From the mummy. <laughs> I have. Getting punched in the face still hurts. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Martin. You know, I still got internal bleeding going on from that shit. <laughs> mummy raped me. <laughs> it was a movie that was bad. There's been a lot of bad attempts at what at creating new franchises, universes. There's a lot of, you know, these, these remakes, these acquired properties from a long time ago. Everybody's trying to do something, and I get it. When they fuck up, they fuck up. But... Uh, you know, we have to go and we have to start paying attention to the things that did happen that were really uh, great this year. Not this summer, but this year. Because if you really take 2017 as a whole, the things that people are criticizing this year for, pointing the fingers at franchises, it's the franchises that took the biggest risk. Because sure. the franchises... If you take a risk with a franchise and established property, you got the most to lose. True. In 2017, let me just give you a quick reminder and a quick rundown. I want you guys to come in on this. I'm gonna look. We're gonna do a roundtable, but l- let me refresh y'all since y'all are so you have such short-term memory. Uh, one of the biggest risks this year, and also being one of the biggest films, a, a risk that really paid off, uh, and is the sixth highest-grossing movie this year. Logan, man. Oh, yeah. Logan is probably the biggest risk that they've taken with a film because they took a superhero franchise and turned it into something that ain't nobody paying to see, which is a dark western. Mm Mm-hmm. And they took all the mutants out. Ain't nobody flying around. Ain't nobody shooting lasers out the toes and shit. You know, this is really a nihilistic film where it is, and it's a dark, depressing film. And then they took the, and, and it became something that they took a risk and it paid off. Because for one thing, they finally got that violent, crazy ass Wolverine that everybody wanted. It was a calculated risk, but it was a risk nevertheless. And it took it from a huge franchise that, that spans numerous films. And for that, you have, first for this movie alone, you have to say, wow. You really went out on a limb, 20th Century Fox. Well, they also went out, out on a limb by definitively ending that series. What? Dude, come on, man. I'm they not going yeah, they ain't gonna, t- <laughs> We always have time yeah, travel, girls. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's another thing. They didn't take that much of a risk. They're like, yeah, we can probably kill the dude all. We can always bring him back with a time machine or something or some superpower. But yeah, but, you know, for the time being, it's still, still a ballsy move. How you feel about it, Gertz? Well, yeah, I, I. If you will look at our review, I didn't like this movie as much as you guys did. I still. Oh, like. that's right. Fuck off. All right, Corey. <laughs> no, I thought this was a fantastic movie. <laughs> I still like it though, and it did take a lot of risks. And the parts where it took the most risks were the parts that I liked the most about it. Yeah. What about you, Corey? No, I think you guys summed it up a lot. It was something that a lot of people weren't expecting in 20th Century Fox. I mean, they, they it was a very calculated risk, but it was a risk for them to do this. Yeah, it was, and it's a, and it's a great film too. And uh, you know, I, I I have to admire it because, like I said, 
Yeah. It doesn't. They don't need to go around wearing cowboy hats and riding horses to be a western. There's a modern day western, and even a modern day western is something that's hard to pass over uh, because it's just a genre and a format that just has these very specific details that people just don't grasp to all the time. Especially a dark western like this, where it doesn't have a happy ending. Now, 20th Century Fox has taken a lot. Of risk by trying to make people depressed. <laughs> yeah. you know, they were, that's almost like 20th Century Fox wants you to be entertained, and then go home and kill yourself. Because they, and let's and let's look at the next movie that they actually had this summer. Now, while this movie also probably underperformed from expectations, just by its its ambition, it's a success. Planet of the Apes. You got a movie. I just I I, lo- I got to hire her to just be in the audience. I love when I bring these movies up and Adrian's over there like yes. <laughs> Yes, bravo, monkeys, yes. But Planet of the Apes, War for the Planet of the Apes is a ballsy film because they they risk all just to bring you emotion. And you you have a movie where they hardly have any humans. They are not speaking any, they're not, they're hardly speaking at all, which means that a lot of the movies either do sign language, which a lot of people don't know, or they put, put up subtitles right. at the time of the year where people, man, look, I'm off. It's summertime. I don't go to movies to go to work. I ain't yeah, reading this shit. I don't read. I read in yeah. school. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. You might as well just throw a fucking book up on the screen. I come here to be entertained and escape. But yes. nevertheless, they did take a risk with this. It's a success despite, uh, you know, in spite of itself because the movie with what they tried to do here where it's a lot of... Uh, CG characters over humans you make the humans the bad people and most of them don't speak at all mm-hmm. that's a that is a risk a huge risk and, the, and the, the special effects in this film cost a shit load of money yeah one of the big things that they're they're banking on is uh, when this actually comes out on home release because they're saying everybody already owns these first two which were sure. in, in theaters yeah. big blockbusters they already probably already own those Blu-rays mm-hmm. they're gonna buy them when they get home too oh yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't even about think about one. that that makes perfect sense mm-hmm. right there uh, what about you Martin anything to weigh in on here with the apes uh, anything I'm saying <laughs> uh, well I mean um, basically on anything you're saying this whole article I, I've, I've grown to hate these think pieces it, it's, it's some writer who just needs to write something and find an angle and that whole premise I'm like you're full of shit it's, because I, I we go to these movies every year every and every mm-hmm. summer it's always built up oh it's gonna be this it's gonna be this it's gonna be this and then by the time we're done we're like well man most of those were disappointments there's two movies everybody agrees on mm-hmm. there's two or three that people are mixed on and all the rest everybody's like eh this is the first time where the, the good movies started way back in February mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've had so many good ones and yeah we've had a few duds here and there mm-hmm. but they haven't been duds to the point to where they've ruined my good feeling. Yeah, like, like, exactly. Like, like when you say Baywatch is a shitty movie, yes, it absolutely is. Yeah. I, I, I'm not defending Baywatch in any way other than to say that I've seen stuff that's worse let's, even this let's year. Let's just drop Baywatch take that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Before I can hear his blood yeah. boiling, right? Yeah, let's, let's, let's what I'm saying it. is overall, the, the batting average for this year has, has been better yeah. than, than the last few years I can remember. Yeah. Very true. And, 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 and let's take some movies that did not underperform. Logan didn't. Uh, maybe apes did but there are some movies where they say okay this shit and I even read this in a few articles including I think the one I just saw here superheroes people are getting tired of that shit people are finally beginning to see through it all the formula is wearing on them Uh, tell that shit to Wonder Woman Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman (laughs) Wonder Woman I believe is the number two highest grossing film in the in, in the country, you know, this movie was important to a lot of women this is the first time that we've seen women turn out in this number Mm -hmm. to go see a franchise superhero movie, thus being a franchise that went out on a limb to take another risk. All these movies are doing something that these huge films are doing something that no one else is really doing and being successful at it to a certain length. It's it's weird how you can make so much money when you make a good movie. Right. This is one of those ones where word of mouth really helped it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it had the smallest opening I think of any of the DC cinematic universe movies, but it went on to make the most money domestically. It had the most legs. Them. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I'll even some y'all gonna slap the shadow of me for this, but I'll even go as, as far as to say that uh, something that was not successful really and it was mixed critically, but I will admire this movie for actually trying to do something Alien Covenant man I would say that movie went in and at least tried to bring some some smart science fiction somewhere in there 
Now, that it is a problem because uh, really Scott had his vision and 20th Century Fox came in and said, you better put a fucking alien in there somewhere. I don't yeah. care where. And when they did that, they just threw his ass off. Yeah. You, see, you see him in interviews where he's like, I don't know what the fuck is going on anymore. I had to make these movies, though. I didn't realize how polarizing this movie was either. There are some people who really like it and some people who hate it. It's not, I will tell you, it's not a great movie, but there are moments in there where you can see yeah. some kind of brilliance trying to pop out of it. Yeah, I ain't like it. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> I Pretty good. But I get why you don't, but I'm just saying it, it did try some things. And when you really think about it, when you say that this, this has been a bad summer and Hollywood is producing bad shit, listen, you have some things that normally wouldn't even succeed in the summertime. Uh, regardless of what Christopher Nolan says, a lot of people said it still comes across as a war film, Dunkirk. And we know that Nolan can sell things, but that is still a hard sell for a summertime, making a war film. Sure. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's an action film or not. Dunkirk is, it has made uh, over $100 million in a span of two weeks three weeks that is something where again that was recent and everybody's going crazy about this and yet somehow some of these articles forgot yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah no, that, yeah that, that's what I said they, they, they're told to write from an angle and they just try to find it and ignore all the facts that don't support yeah. the premise mm-hmm. think about the original properties that people said man you throw that shit out there in the middle of summer these franchises are going to tear that shit up they're going to eat that shit to the bone one movie stood out it was a critical, critical success, and also it's about to hit $100 million, and audiences love it. Baby Driver. Now, again, there'll be a few critics that don't like it, or they think it's just not that big of a deal, but it's hit with audiences all around. That is a, an original property that has succeeded in the summertime. And also, the, the, the vision of one particular director, not a committee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For him, shit, the way he pissed Marvel off, I'm surprised he's still alive. Edgar Wright. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's still walking around. You know, the other films out there that probably seem like uh, films that are just mainstream cash grabs, but they really are deep. The sibling rivalry message that goes in the Boss Baby, I really thought was deep. And this movie is something that Martin's like, you better cut that shit off right now. <laughs> Mar- Martin won't look at me like that right now. I'm like, All right, Martin, I'm sorry. I'll change it. No, nah, but, you know, we're, and we're, about to, uh, we're about to wrap this up here. But I think one of the biggest things, whoever wrote this article doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, but one of the big things that kind of showed how this movie, I'm sorry, this year was doing better with movies as opposed to most years recently is like, remember, we were always dreading like when February comes and yeah. March comes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We had two great movies in Lego Batman and Get Out in February. Yeah. And then in March, we had Logan. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, wow. Like, it, I feel like with this year, the great movies were more spaced out than like they sure. usually are. And but we're also still getting good content in the summer. So I was like, I don't understand what the, what the angle does person's coming from yeah, yeah I, there's a there's, you know there's been elements they make good points but there's been elements of uh, like i said short-sightedness and all of these i mean think about in this year you know we're talking about earlier how we want hard to have more art- artistic uh vision to it but this year we got a horror movie with not only a social message which is uh, which makes some of the best horror and science fiction sure. but this came from the risky the risky area of making a black social message how long has this been going on this Thing. I just love that creepy shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 This movie would still be at 100 if it wasn't for Armand White. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's almost like he's looking at the black dude like, yeah, hey, I want some of that shit too. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, we got we're getting these movies that are financially successful, yeah. successful with the audience, and they're saying something. 2017 has been an amazing year, and I think people are just letting one or two or three or four or eight bad movies kind of mess it up. But even if the even even if there are more bad movies this year than there are good ones to the level of what we just showed you, it's still amazing work what we've got with them because we don't get those kind of movies in this abundance. Not 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 yeah. this early in the year. Mm. And yeah, I mean there's there's been bad movies, but very few that have pissed me off to that that point. Mm. A lot of them are like yeah, I, I expect you to show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do exactly. Every year. But, exactly. But these other guys have been cool, so I'm going to let you go on slide. 2017, we got your back. <laughs> Don't let them talk shit about you. We got you. This article is a think piece without the thinking. Yeah. And no, I, you know, just in case, because I'm always going to say nobody's listening, and no, most people don't, except that one person we said, oh, they ain't listening. <laughs> and they're like, hey, motherfucker, I wrote that article. But, you know, that's uh, all these articles make some good points. I just don't think that you're framing 2017 enough to be the good year that it really is. What are they equating to? movies being good are they saying box office returns or like how people feel about them because if you go about off of box office returns yeah I could see why they're making this argument but if it's off of like a movie actually having like artistic intent and being a decent movie then I think they don't have a leg to stand on I think they're going by buzzwords 
Okay. Yeah. Franchise fatigue. Mm-hmm. Hollywood tired. You know, all that okay. kind of stuff. So, yeah, don't, don't, 20 said, don't listen to me, motherfucker, man. You got 